G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel once again from the United Kingdom. Um, as the winter starts to approach here in the UK, you're going to see the lighting of the videos will get decreasingly worse. We get about six, seven hours of daylight a day at the moment. Maybe it's a little bit more than that, I don't know, but sunset was at 4.41 yesterday. So today's video is a trade related one and uh, I thought it'd be a kind of a fun idea to look at what each respective club in the AFL would look at in 2024 as to their dream trade. So what do we mean by dream trade? Well, uh, obviously that's a little bit broad. Naturally, if we were talking in real terms, every team's dream trade would probably be like Nick Dacos. You could do that 18 times over or Bontempelli or something like that. Um, but in this one, I've decided to keep it a little bit more realistic and for the most part, I think 17 out of the 18 players that I've picked here are actually out of contract at the end of 2024 and are not considered a wildly unrealistic trade option. So what we're going to do is go through the 18 teams alph alphabetically and I've assigned them all a player and I've gone with 18 different ones that I think would be their ideal trade outcome for 2024. You would have seen last week on the channel, I did an early prediction for what trades we might see in 2024. So this is almost like a little part two to that, except I'm going through each club individually and looking at who would be an ideal target for them. Before I get into the video guys, uh, make sure you hit subscribe if you are enjoying the content. I have a goal of 24,000 by uh, the draft and we're making pretty good progress. We're almost halfway there. So thank you very much if you do subscribe. All right, let's start with the Adelaide Crows. Uh, in terms of what they need, uh, well, you'd probably go either an ideally a midfield but for me, I still think there's the key position defensive gap on their list, so to speak. So um, in recent times, they lost Fisher Mackesy. He was someone they spent a high draft pick on as a key defensive option. And their defensive mix of Butts, Murray and Worrell is decent. But we saw them go really hard for Harrison Petty uh, this trade period. And I'm going to double down on that and say that Harrison Petty is probably the ideal realistic trade candidate for Adelaide. How likely is this? Well, he's the one player that I'm mentioning, if I'm not mistaken, that is not out of contract. So again, it really depends how to what extent Melbourne are willing to come to the party for a deal, but I'd imagine Adelaide go hard for Harrison Petty again. Then we'll go with the Brisbane Lions. Uh, this one is tricky because looking at their list, the position they're in, a big name trade doesn't really make any sense. So rather than just pick out a random player who I think would suit them, uh, let's keep it real. I'd say the, the trade outcome that is um, desirable for them is just accumulating enough points for Levi Ashcroft in next year's draft. Now, Levi Ashcroft probably doesn't go pick one or two. Uh, it's too early to tell, but he's probably going to be around the mark for that top five range. So at the moment, Brisbane hold pick 17, and then I think at the next pick's in the 40s and 50s. So they're probably not quite there yet. They would probably want to try to improve that draft position. So I would just say that will be their primary focus next year. Then with Carlton, um, I would be looking at a dynamic midfield slash forward option, specifically a forward who rotates through the midfield. We know that they kind of address this issue with Orazio Fantasia a little bit. He's more of a genuine small forward and uh, they did have some interest in Jade Gresham. So failing that, one player that is out of contract is Cam Zerha and he is a chance to leave North Melbourne, I suppose. Not That's not really based on anything concrete. It's just that Carlton would be an attractive destination for him if they do have another good year. So I would say that Cam Zerha to Carlton would be a great get. Then we've got a Collingwood Football Club. Look, they've already got a great list. They just won the Premiership. Um, in terms of what holes they have in the list, probably if we're speaking with a little bit of fantasy speak, I'd say Ben King is probably their ultimate goal. You could go Jamara Ugal Hagen. I'd probably just go Ben King. He's a little bit more mature and a bit more of a number one option. And look, they did plug that gap with Dan McStay a couple of years ago, but or one year ago, sorry. But Ben King is a legitimate goal kicker who could potentially be a common threat one day. And that, that just elevates him above McStay. So I'd say in an ideal world, Collingwood, Ben King, that would be ideal. Then we've got the Essendon Football Club, obviously massively active in this year's trade period. And if they were to enter the market next year for established players, if they still have bit of money, which reportedly it's still possible that they do. I would go for the midfield option of Bailey Smith from the Western Bulldog. Bailey Smith was linked to a move potentially this year, but he's obviously still contracted. Look, the, the clubs he was more linked to were Geelong and Hawthorne from what I read, um, but Essendon would still be throwing their hat in the ring for him if he was available in 12 months time. Brings a bit of a different edge to that midfield. And someone like a Dylan Shield, they're, they're somewhat comparable in that they're both explosive style players. Dylan Shield's getting a bit older. I would say Bailey Smith is an upgrade anyway. So Essendon 
Essendon getting Bailey Smith would be huge. Then you've got the Fremantle Footy Club, and I would still say they're still on the hunt for a key position forward. We know that they've traded into the 2024 draft heavily with three first-round picks currently, and we uh, suspect that they're going to make a big move, and one of those options would be Logan McDonald, West Australian key forward from the Sydney Football Club. And the prospect of pairing up Jai Amos and Logan McDonald as two West Australian key forwards in that team is, well, it's scary as an Eagles fan. So I hope that doesn't happen, but Logan McDonald to Fremantle would be huge for them. Then we've got the Geelong Football Club. Uh, I'm going to pick out one that I talked about in the previous video, and I'll say Sean Darcy as either a restricted free agent or a potential trade if if an uh, offer gets matched, which you'd imagine it probably is a good chance it would. So Geelong's ruck has never been a strong suit, at least for a not, not for a long time now. Sean Darcy on his day is one of the best in the game, to be honest. He's in the top handful, I would say. And he makes a huge difference to Fremantle when he is playing. So this one, I think, is actually quite realistic. I think Geelong could get him in 12 months' time. And, you know, he's in the age bracket of, I think he'll be about 26 next year, where he is both good in the short term and he's still got a lot of shelf life for his career. Next, we've got the Gold Coast Suns. Uh, this one is a tricky one because I feel like with their salary cap situation, I don't know how realistic it is for them to trade in a big name. But let's throw... Someone out there like Dusty Martin. That would probably be ideal from their point of view. He's out of contract this year at Richmond. This is his final year of that massive contract he signed a while ago. Does he retire? I don't think he's really close to retiring from the outside looking in. There is the Hardwick connection. Is this realistic? I would imagine Dusty's more likely to stay a one-club player, but if he did go somewhere, the Gold Coast Suns, on a decent pay packet if they can afford him, it would bring bums on seats. And with Gold Coast in the position they're in, um, it might be a good move for them. So I'd say from a marketing point of view, Dustin Martin. Next, we have GWS. Uh, They are a tricky one as well because they're notoriously not great at um, attracting talents, or at least not for a little while now. They've probably had that period while they were good of actually getting a few ready-made players in. Ryan Griffin, Brett Deledio um, come to mind. But for where they're at right now, even though they're half decent, I would say that they're probably going to lower their eyes. And I'd say Elliot Himmelberg from the Adelaide Crows would be one target. You know, I could also nominate Ben King, Jamara Ugelhagen, other big key forwards in the competition. But this one is a little bit more realistic. His brother already plays for him. They had a crack at him at the end of 2023 and couldn't quite get the deal over the line. But he'll be out of contract, 200 centimeter key forward, position of need. I think the Giants would be happy with that move. Then with Hawthorne, uh, again, I think they'll be in the thick of it for a Ben King or Jamara Ugelhagen. I had Ben King for Collingwood, so I'll just put Jamara Ugelhagen here, but even a Logan McDonald also makes sense for them. So I think they're looking to add another key forward to their list, but a high-end one, and Jamara Ugelhagen would be that. Maybe he, in terms of his skill set, plays more as a second forward alongside Mitch Lewis, not necessarily ranked second, but maybe his skill set offsets what they already have better than, say, a Ben King. But um, let me know in the comments what you think. Then we've got Melbourne, another team probably in the mix for key position forward talent. Now, I've listed Ben King. I've listed Jamara Ugelhagen. Let's throw Todd Marshall into the mix here. To be honest, you know, who would Melbourne rather end up with? It would be Ben King or Jamara Ugelhagen. But again, let's lower the eyes for a little bit, get some more names out there. And Todd Marshall is another good shout. Is it realistic? I have no idea how likely it is Todd Marshall leaves Port Adelaide. Probably not that likely, but his production's pretty good. He hits the scoreboard fairly regularly for Port Adelaide, and he's out of contract. So it'll be interesting to see if teams come hard for him this year. Next, I have the North Melbourne Football Club. This one's tricky as well. Another team in a rebuild, looking for mature talent for sure. Again, another side that has struggled to really get big names to their club. Probably not on the hunt for a midfielder. I've gone with maybe some run and carry off the halfback flank. And so I've gone with a player that is a pretty good role player for the Brisbane Lions in Brandon Stasevich. Now, Brandon Stasevich is out of contract. Probably not going to leave the Lions, but a mature player entering his prime. I think he's got a load of potential, and I think North Melbourne would be pretty happy to land a player of that type. Again, you know, we've seen them play Harry Sheasel in the halfback flank. They might do the same with Harley Reid if they end up with him. But assuming someone like a Sheasel plays forward in the future, where I think that's his best position, Stasevich could come in and help improve that back six. So it's a little bit of a left field one, but I do like the the idea of it. Then we've got the Port Adelaide Football Club. Uh, Now, this one is tricky as well. So we've seen them go heavy on trades in the last couple of years. Um, they traded in Jason Horn Francis plus four talls this year. I'll go different with this one. I say Port Adelaide's best trade outcome would be trade back into this year's draft because we don't want to see them go three first rounds of drafts in a row without taking a pick. So they've consolidated their depth. They've obviously got you know a few aging players in that team. So I think the transition of youth is still going to be important. So if they can push their 2025 first rounder into 2024, I'd say that's a best case scenario from a Port Adelaide point of view. Next, we'll go with Richmond. They are a interesting case 
study in terms of list management because, um, you know, I've talked about it on this channel, but we saw them load up with two good quality experience mids in Taranto and Hopper and then fell down the ladder quite poorly this year. So what do they need to do? I think inject some youth. So this is probably going to be more of a... Uh, draft focused look this year considering as well as it currently stands they don't have a first rounder in 2023 so i have picked a player here though but it is a free agent potentially in ollie florent so ollie florent is obviously a good midfielder for the sydney swans with richmond's transition it would make sense for them to use the free agency mechanism to try and get some good quality players in if it doesn't compromise their draft situation so if they're in a position to offer someone like ollie florent a fair bit of money to come home as an experienced midfielder suddenly the short term doesn't look so bad and they don't compromise their long term. What else I would be doing for Richmond is probably considering they've had a lack of access to talent in the last two drafts, probably be scouring the market for some underpriced talents that haven't quite made it at their clubs. Some players that come to mind are Connor Stone at GWS, Jack Carroll from Carlton, Finlay McRae at Collingwood, even Reef McInnes as well. Players that wouldn't cost the world but are technically a young talent who have shown some degree of potential previously. So Richmond will be an interesting one to watch in 2024. Then we've got the Saints. Uh, this one is an interesting one. I have actually put humor cluggage for them for a couple of reasons one they're trying to regenerate their midfield we saw them um you know invest in some midfield depth and run and carry in dow and uh liam henry humor cluggage would be a dream trade for every club in the league but i picked st kilda a because you know they're going to have a huge amount of interest in him not only because he's a quality player but i think the type of player he is also really suits the saints and he is out of contract i believe as a free agent this year so again st kilda is one of those clubs that has struggled a little bit to get real high-end quality players onto their list from other clubs, but if they did pull this off, it would be huge. Next, we've got the Sydney Swans, and uh, this one is a bit of a cheeky one. What do they need? Well, uh, you know, the list is pretty strong, and particularly their young talent is strong. They're pretty even across the board. They've got good key forward prospects, smalls, young midfielders coming out the wazoo. I'm going to say that they certainly need some defenders, both medium and tall. So I'd say their dream scenario is actually Aaliyah Aaliyah going back to the Sydney Swans. Is this realistic? Probably not, but he is out of contract, so therefore kind of fits the vague criteria of this uh, video. We saw them pick up Joel Hamling. That's a stopgap option, to be honest. Hamling has been good at times throughout his career, missed a lot of um, you know games through injury, and is also quite deep into his own career as well. So that's a bit of a stopgap option. They're going to need someone a little bit more experienced. They obviously went for Ben Mackay. I'd imagine they'd at least be asking the question of Elia Elia to go back to the Swans. Again, probably not realistic. So some backups for them. Adam Tomlinson at Melbourne, Harrison Petty also at Melbourne. Again, if Harrison Petty leaves, Tomlinson's probably not going to leave and he's kind of a required player now, but they'll be sniffing around. Dougal Howard as well from St Kilda. I believe Tomlinson and Howard will be out of contract. You'd be looking at um, maybe some younger options like Buzzlinger or Granger Barras, former high picks that they could potentially extract out of their club. So there's options there for Sydney. I'm a little surprised they didn't get someone a little bit more long-term as a key defender, but we'll see what happens. Then we've got the West Coast Eagles. Now, uh, I would uh, hand on heart say Logan McDonald is probably the absolute dream scenario but in the interest of picking a different player another very worthy option is Tim English from the Western Bulldogs who qualifies as a free agent because he's out of contract this year and uh, obviously just came off an all-Australian ruck season so why Tim English well first of all uh, Nick Natnui retired and I believe West Coast probably always had an intention to get English in as a contingency because there has been a lot of reported interest there the other good thing about English is if West Coast are in a position to offer a lot of money and therefore rule out the Western Bulldogs are being able to match the bid. That means he goes there as a free agent, not as a trade. And West Coast's primary focus over the next few years will be the draft. So if there is a way that they can get Tim English onto their list without giving up any draft collateral, that's a pretty dream scenario because as good as Bailey Williams was this year, Tim English is an upgrade on very many rucks in the league right now. And then finally, the Western Bulldogs. Now, their biggest focus, before I actually name the player, will probably be retention next year. So they've got Tim English out of contract. They've got Bailey Smith potentially out the door. Jamara Ugelhagen is another one out of contract. So those will be the primary focuses rather than necessarily getting anyone into the club. But from a hypothetical point of view, um, let's look at maybe the half forward line. That's probably where I would start. They've been playing Bailey Smith there a little bit out of position. James Harms is another one that might start on a half forward flank. I just think they could use a genuine half forward a high half forward that can play in the midfield as well. And that's why I've gone with Ben Ainsworth from the Gold Coast Suns, who is out of contract as well. Again, there's not really a comment on how likely he is to leave the Gold Coast Suns, but you kind of have this feeling that any player has a chance to leave the Gold Coast Suns. So that would probably be their primary focus. I'd also imagine looking at a key position defender is also going to be another focus. So the backs of um, Alex Carey and Liam Jones, 
Those two in particular are quite old now. They've previously had interest in someone like Adam Tomlinson, um, but that never eventuated. But if we're talking in a little bit of a dream scenario, Ben Ainsworth would be a great outcome for the Western Bulldogs. Okay, there you have it, guys. That is my uh, list of all A teams dream trade scenario or dream outcome for next season. Again, it's a little bit arbitrary. I tried my best to have all 18 clubs have 18 different players rather than just list, you know, 12 players across 18 clubs or even try and give wildly unrealistic ones. I'm not saying most of these are realistic, but they're at least out of contract and potentially a focus for various clubs. And I'm sure clubs call players unrealistically more than we know. So anyway, guys, that is what I thought. Let me know in the comments what you agree with and disagree with. Again, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.